Hello everyone, I am glad to welcome you into today's word from the Lord. And you know what, I'll say this just right off top, today's word it's going to be uh, one where we just hit one of those very controversial topics and points, but it's something that must be talked about. It's something that must be shared, especially among believers, those of us who are within the body of Christ. And there's a lot of, just by the title alone, you see that we're gonna be talking about um, the one, the one. And I'll go into more detail on what I mean by that, but it's one of those messages that must be shared among the body of Christ, especially with all of the talk that there is about marriage. And you see all of these um, videos out, you see all of these ministries out that talk about marriage and they talk about your kingdom spouse, they talk about that man of God, or they talk about that woman of God. And I will say this because it just is what it is. There's a lot of information out there that is not biblically uh, sound, right? There's a lot of information out there that's not rooted within the word of God. Even within, um, you know, I'll just say this, within talking circles that are not necessarily led by Christians, that are not spearheaded by a believer, but yet you have people who are children of God, they're going to the world. They're going to people who are in the world to receive their instruction and their guidance on how they should pursue marriage, how they should go about starting a kingdom marriage. I'm just gonna let you know right up top that you can't learn how to have, prepare, and stand the test of time when it comes to a kingdom marriage from the world. You just can't, you can't get what you need to know to prepare you for a godly kingdom marriage from the world. There's information out there that leads people into witchcraft. There's information out there that leads people into manipulation, that leads people into control, and it never goes well. There's a way that seems right to a man, but it leads to death and destruction. So I'm going to pray and then we'll get into the word of the Lord today and we'll put the scriptures up on the screen for you. Some of them I'm going to be reading directly from the word of God and others I'll just be quoting. I'll just be throwing it out there just so you can go into your own time with the Lord and your own time with the Lord and seek him on what he has to say about these matters and study the word for yourself. And so we're going to be talking about is there a such thing as the one? Because that's one of those questions that many people have in their mind, but they don't ever actually address, right? It's never actually addressed head on. And so we're going to see what God has to say about it. We're going to look for the Lord and the plan of God in his word. So God, I, we give you all the glory. I give you all the glory, Lord. We lift your name up high. We give you glory. Every marriage that's connected to this ministry glorifies you, God, and I thank you for it. If they're not glorifying you, Lord, bring them into correct order and alignment with the will and plan of God for their life. According to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, I thank you, Lord, that you are so faithful, merciful, and good to your children. Those who have been drawn to this message, those who brought to this message, and they want a sure word from the Lord, something that is correct, something that aligns with your word, God, in the Holy Bible. Open up their heart, open up their mind of understanding so that it penetrates them in a new way, so, they, so that they get new revelation, things that were not revealed to them before about what you, what you desire, God, concerning marriage, what you think about marriage what you had initially planned concerning the marriage covenant when it comes to your children, Lord. I ask that you will draw people to this message, those who need it, those who have been deceived, those who are even those, God, who have itching ears and they just want to hear messages about marriage, draw them here so that they hear the truth and then they go looking no more, but they go to you, God. They go to you who is the source of all things, you who is the creator of their entire life, the creator of all things. I thank you, Lord, that you showed up mightily in the marriage prep master class. I thank you, Lord, for continuing to show up mightily in the lives of those you've called to marriage in this season. Show up mightily even today, Lord, as I minister what you put in my spirit to share with your people. I thank you, Lord, for every marriage that is connected to this ministry. I thank you, God, for every marriage that will come forth from this ministry. We give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. So as I said, this one is 
going to be a con very controversial topic. And here's the thing, I wasn't going to talk about this today. I was not going to share this with you all today, but I was praying over the marriage prep course that I will be teaching in quite uh, actually within a short period of time. And so I actually won't be before you long today. But what I will say is that I was praying over the marriage prep course because I do that every time. Every Monday when we meet, I pray. Um, and then I will sit with the Lord and see, is there anything else you want me to share with them? Is there something that you want me to share? And then I will um, add on to my notes. I'll, sometimes the Lord will say, no, say this, and then I'll say that. But what I do want to be sure of is that only what the Lord wants to be shared is shared. And that's why there's massive acceleration on these courses. And so I give God all the glory. But what I will say is when I was in prayer this morning, and I was sitting over the notes that the Lord has for me to share in that course, there was something that was dropped in my spirit. And I said, I can't just, I can't just leave this alone in that course. I have to share it because it's not talked about enough within the body of Christ. And that is, is there such thing as the one? And I'm going to tell you, for those of you who've ever had that question, we're going to go into the word of God. And I believe that he's going to give you revelation today. And so, as I said, this is a very controversial topic, and so I'm going to give a disclaimer right off top in the beginning. We're going to go into discussing this topic, and I'm just going. I'm going to go as deep as the Lord wants me to today. But this is something that can be expanded upon among many different messages and teachings, and this is why I have an entire marriage course. But what I will say is that we're going to go pretty deep into discussing this topic. But first, what I would encourage you to do is put aside all offense, put aside your feelings, put those things aside, because I'm going to tell you that personal feelings, it can sometimes, actually very often, it can blind you to the truth of what God's word says. You know, when, when someone is blinded by their feelings or offense, they could read the word of God and read it through a lens it's almost like reading it through rose colored glasses reading it through the lens of trauma reading it through the lens of hurt reading it through the lens of offense and your feelings set those things aside actually lord we call on you now send your spirit god into their mind and their heart open up their understanding so that they read the word of god with with the wisdom of God. They get guidance from your spirit, God. I thank you, Lord, for being with us now in the name of Jesus. And so, yes, we must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. We must be sensitive to the Spirit of God. However, we cannot allow our lives to be ran simply by off of what we feel. We must go off of what we know based on the word of God. If we allow our lives to be ran, if we allow our relationships to be ran off of what we feel, it will lead you into just treacherous situations down a path that seems right because you're, you feel right. It seems right based on your feelings, but it ends and leads to death and destruction. That's the word of God. That is, is not the word of Shannon. It's the word of God. And so, yes, we have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, what we can't allow our lives and especially not our relationships to be ran off of what we feel by what we know, though, by what we know. OK, so is there a such thing as the one? The short answer is yes and no, but we're going to go deep into it. We're going to get deep. The short answer is yes and no. So when you start talking about marriage the way that God designed it to be, it gets very specific because we serve a specific God. We serve a God who's not chaotic. We serve a God who's not a God of confusion. And we serve a God of order. He's very strategic. Do you know that about God? He's very strategic, which means that he puts strategies in place that ultimately brings about the will of God for your life, which is good because he has plans in a future for you. He has plans to give you hope in a future. That's Jeremiah 29, 11. And so when you start talking about marriage God's way, kingdom marriage and how God designed it to be, it is very specific. And so we're going to look into it. Let's take a magnifying glass to Genesis chapter 16, and we're going to look at it very closely. We're going to examine it. I want you to go there with, come there with me. Genesis chapter 16, we're going to look at it with new eyes and we're going to examine it. 
Now, what I will say for those of you who are following along with me here, and it, just take this uh, advice for when you're studying scripture, period, not just when we're reading this, this account within the Bible, but when you're studying scripture, period, it's important that when reading it and studying it, that we're looking for the plan of God throughout the text. We're looking for where is God in this? What is God doing here with this relationship? Why did God say that? Why did God send them here? Why did God say no to this? Look for the plan of God. And when you read the Bible that way, you will only draw closer to God and you'll only see the plan of God manifested in your life. You'll only see the plan of God manifested in your life because you'll realize something about the Lord when you start reading the Bible this way. You'll realize that he never changes. He never changes. He has a specific character and a specific way that he does things and the specific way that ultimately he likes to do things. And then you realize he's the same today forevermore, forevermore. He never changes. Okay, so look for the plan of God through this. Let's start. Um, actually, I'll share some things with you and then we're going to go from Genesis 16 and I'm going to skim through verse 1 through 12. Okay, what we first have to know, have to know is that Isaac, which is the promised child, he's the promise and we'll get into that when we start reading the scriptures. He had to come through Abraham and Sarah. Isaac had to, Isaac the promised child had to come specifically through, God is a specific God, through Abraham and Sarah, no matter how hard they tried to force the same outcome with another woman, we know that to be Hagar, it would have never happened. It would have never happened. And so did God bless Hagar? Absolutely. We're going to read that. God blesses Hagar. He sends an angel to give word to her. And that angel speaks a blessing of multiplication over her. However, Ishmael was never going to be an Isaac, no matter how hard they tried. So let's go there. Genesis chapter 16, verse 1. Now Sarai, because her name was Sarai at the time, and Abraham's name was Abram at the time. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. She had a female Egyptian servant whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go in to my servant. It may be that I shall obtain my children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. And that's, there's so much with, within that to be said because we see a similar parallel with um, Adam and Eve in the beginning when they were in the garden. She, Eve ate and then now Adam listens to her and does the same thing. That's a lot to be said about that. And I, don't, I, I know that many people take those two accounts out of context and I don't have time to teach on it now, but there is a lot to be said about that. So after Abram had lived 10 years in the land of Canaan, Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian, her servant, and gave her to Abram, her husband, as a wife. What I will say about that is that when it comes to the, or, the proper order, and many of us know what it must be said now, when it comes to the proper order is that the, the husband is the covering, which is the head over the wife, but then the covering over both as a unit is the Lord. And so Abram should have went to the Lord. He should have went to the Lord. But we don't see that happen. And verse 4, and he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. And so now she's upset. And Sarai said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my servant to your embrace. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. And so now she's putting the blame on her husband for ultimately a plan that she had crafted up and she's failing to take accountability or responsibility for her actions. But that's neither here nor there because I want you to pay attention to um, something specific here. Okay, so let's go down to verse 11. And the angel of the Lord said to her, this is the angel going to Hagar after she conceives, after she has Ish Ishmael, who is not the promised child. God sends an angel to her and he says, Behold, you are pregnant and shall bear a son, and you shall call, or actually this is, okay, let's keep going. And you shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has listened to your affliction. 
He shall be a wild donkey of a man, and his hand against everyone, and everyone's hand against him. And so he's speaking, he's speaking ultimately the destiny over Ishmael's life. So I want to go up to you, up to uh, verse 7. Let's go up to verse 7. Listen to this. The angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? And she said, I'm fleeing from my mistress Sarai because she understands at this point now she's angry. And the angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her because that's the proper order. God is a God of order. Verse 10, the angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. And then it goes on to explain, um, you know, how she should bear a son, what his name is going to be, and he's speaking the destiny over, over his life. So what we have to understand is that, and we're going to get into it, there's a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And so did God accept Ishmael? Well, he sent an angel of the Lord to bless her, to bless Hagar. And so it wasn't necessarily the perfect will of God. But God said, okay, this happened, was an act of disobedience. I'm going, because it was completely, hear me when I say this, completely out of Hagar's control. She was to submit to Sarai, which was correct. She was doing simply what she was told to do. God understood that. He understood that. And because of that, he sent an angel of the Lord to bless her, completely out of her control, all that went on in her life all that went on within, within Abram and Sarah's, Sarai's marriage at the time. And so I'm telling you that no matter how hard Abram and Sarai at the time, which is Abraham and Sarah tried, Ishmael was never going to be an Isaac. However, the Lord looked at the entire situation. He took everything into context and still put a blessing on Hagar, even though Ishmael was not the promised child. And so we have to look at the plan of God and the entirety of the, this account and what's going on here. And so when you, when you ask the question, is there a such thing as the one, as I said, yes and no, because here's the thing. Isaac was the promise and he was only going to come through Sarah and Abraham. However, Hagar was there. I want to give you another example. We see a similar account with uh, Jesse. We see a similar account with Jesse, David, and his brothers. And so David, David is the son who is ultimately chosen to enter into kingship. He was chosen by God, just like Isaac was chosen by God. He was the son of Jesse who was chosen to enter into kingship, and it was predestined. It was predestined for his life. God foreknew all the things that he would encounter. But he was also chosen not just to enter into kingship, being the son of Jesse. He was also chosen to receive generational blessings. So it was the same with Isaac. He was chosen to receive the generational blessing that was placed on Abraham's life. And so it had to be Isaac. Do you see that? It had to be Jacob. Do you see that? And so the same with David. It could not have been David's brothers. It had to be David. He was chose to receive generational blessings from the Lord and carry on a godly legacy. And so, no, David could not have come from Jesse's first wife. And so do you know, do you know that, and I've did, done extensive amount of research on this. Do you know that Jesse actually had two wives and David was born from the second wife? And so, no, David could not have come from Jesse's first marriage. And so when you ask the question, is there such thing as the one in the mind of God? Absolutely. In the mind of God, absolutely. But what I will say is that if someone does not marry what God considers to be, this is my perfect will for you, does it mean that God doesn't accept it? Absolutely. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. We actually don't even see that within the word of God. There's no scripture reference for God not accepting someone, marrying someone who is a believer, they're Christian, they're equally yoked, and God's saying that he won't 
honor that. That's not what I'm saying. However, it's a completely different story altogether if someone marries someone who is not a believer, right? They're not saved. They don't believe in the God that you believe in. They don't believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then it becomes an act of rebellion. And so there's a difference between the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You have to know that. And then we're going to actually read that. We're going to go there um, towards the end of this message. So we see the same thing happen with Jesse, David, and his brothers. How his brothers were born from Jesse's first marriage. David was born from the second. And no, David could not have been born from the first marriage. So there is a such thing as the one when it comes to godly legacy. Are you making the connection? When it comes to godly legacy, when it comes to to blessings, specific blessings being bestowed upon an individual by the hand of God, when it comes to promises given to individuals by the hand of God, we see this with Sarah, Abraham, and Isaac. So yes, there is a such thing as the, as the one, but then also that doesn't mean that God won't accept another union. That's not what I'm saying. This is why I said it's important off top. Yes, this is a controversial topic, but you must move your feelings and all offense aside. We see the same thing happen with Hannah and Elkina and Penina, where no, Samuel could not have come from Penina. That was not the will of God. It would have never happened. Samuel had to come from Hannah and Elkina. It would have always been Hannah and Elkina. And so what I want you to understand, and that's actually 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel, for those of you who want to study that. And so what I will say is that it's bigger than simply what someone brings to the table in the natural. I couldn't just let this be something that, and I'm, I, we will go into more detail in the marriage prep course, but this is something that must be shared um, publicly because it's bigger than just simply what someone brings to the table in the natural. Absolutely. You know, you can hear advice from people and say, just go to your church and find a, a man or woman of God there. Do they serve the Lord? Yeah, right? Are they, are they filled with the Spirit of God? Absolutely. Do they live a submitted life to God? Absolutely. That's beautiful. But that's not the one God chose for you. Now, if you happen to enter into a marriage with that person, will God accept it? Absolutely. Will God bless it? Absolutely. But there's a such thing as the one the one that God chose for you. And what I will say is, let's just say, and this, this is where it gets really deep. This is, this is where it gets really deep. And I actually feel the Lord pulling me into doing more extensive teaching on this. If it is the account where, let's just say, a spouse passes away or something like that happens, will God send someone else into your life and then that person is the one? Well, absolutely. Absolutely. But what I will say is that when it comes to generational blessings, when it comes to birthrights, because now you're talking about bloodlines. Bloodlines, is, it's a very deep thing. Actually, this will go into my um, regeneration series because it ties in perfectly. When you're talking about generational blessings, when you're talking about birthrights, when you're talking about giftings, giftings that God puts within a person that ultimately is, is traveling through a specific bloodline, things that are being bestowed upon a very specific individual, it must be a person that God chooses for you. It must be, I'll just put it like that. It must put it as that. It must be a person that God chooses for you. It's very crucial. It is very important. You see something different begin to form. You see a different destiny begin to unfold in your life. It's different because God chose it. It is God's perfect will for you. And so when you're talking about generational blessings, when you're talking about birthrights, when you're talking about giftings, when you're talking about things being bestowed upon a person for the purpose of continuing godly legacy and receiving very specific promises for the Lord, it must be a person that God has chosen for you. And we go into this deep inside the marriage prep course I want to take you to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 through 2. I've read this to you many times, but now we're reading it. We're reading it in the context of marriage. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 through 2. 
I want you to see something and then I'll, I'll pray for you all because I believe the Lord has led you here for a reason. Those of you who are married and those of you who are not married, know that the Lord will bless what you have. The Lord will bless what you have. And for those of you who are not married, understand that the Lord has a person for you. The Lord has already chosen your spouse and it is for a very specific purpose. Very specific promises will come from your obedience and allowing God to lead you and waiting on the Lord. Let's, okay, let me, I'm, I'm in my physical Bible today, so give me a moment, I have to flip there. And I say uh, very specific promises come from uh, allowing God to, your obedience, allowing God to lead you, and waiting on the Lord. Because uh, men of God, the Lord will present your wife to you. He will tell you exactly where to go. He'll tell you exactly what to do. And you staying in the will of God and being obedient to the word of God will put you on the path to coming in contact with your wife. And women of God, you have to be found in the Lord. A man who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. That's Proverbs 18, 22. And so women, you must be found in the Lord. Men, you must stay in the will of God and be obedient to the Lord. Same thing for women. Obedience is very important. Okay. I'm having such a... There we go. Okay. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 through 2. I'm going to break this down to you in the context of marriage. I'm going to pray for you. Um, I have some things to share with you, and then I'll release you. Okay. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to pre present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So I've broken this down before, but I believe that there's going to be new people here. There's going to be new people here who've never heard this before. And it's crucial that you understand and even study it in your own time. So what is he saying here? So he's saying, first, you must appeal. He says, well, therefore, let me actually start. We're going to start the latter half of that uh, Verse one, he's saying, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. How do you do that? That means that you present your body holy and acceptable to God. You don't allow yourself to be led by or fall into or deceived into participating in certain sins, right? You keep your body holy and acceptable to God and you live a repentant life. <clears throat> very crucial. It says that's your spiritual worship. That's how you worship God. How is that so? Because your body is the temple of the living God. God lives within you. His spirit dwells within you. I want you to imagine going into a church and just throwing trash on the floor, going into the temple and throwing trash on the floor, defiling it, allowing all kind of wicked and holy things to go on in that temple that God has trusted you to guard. Well, that's the equivalent of allowing things to go on with your body, with your temple, present it as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. It is your spiritual worship. Verse two, this is where it gets deeper. Do not be conformed to this world. So ultimately he's saying, don't allow your minds, don't do what you see them doing, right? If you see other people saying, this is how you get a wife, this is how you get a man, and it's worldly, it, it brings in concepts and actions of control and manipulation, and then you look at them and say, well, this is how they did it, and they seem happy. You don't know what's going on behind closed doors. You have no clue. You have no clue, but what you do know is true is what the Word of God says. What you do know is true is what God tells you to do. And so this is why obedience is important. Staying in the will of God is important. Staying in the Lord is important. He will always lead you down the path of life. Do not be conformed to this world, 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you do that? You get in the word of God. You listen to words like this. You listen to messages like this. You allow your mind to be transformed. You allow what you think and believe to be true about marriage to be transformed. And it's transformed to align with that which the word of God says, right? You uproot those beliefs that are ultimately lies, lies. And now you plant truth and you allow your life, you allow your mind to be shaped around that truth. Renewing of your mind, that's what it is. Then it says, after you allow yourself to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then that by testing, now you're able to test things, you see? Now you're able to test individuals who come into your life. Now you're able to test that man who comes into your life. Now you're able to test that woman who is presented to you. Is this the will of God, right? Is this someone God sent into my life? It says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you, by testing you may discern. Now you have discernment. Now you have a certain level of discernment. But what are you discerning? You're discerning the will of God. It says, what is the good an acceptable and perfect will of God. What are this? There's three tiers to the will of God. Is it in his good will where God says, okay, this is good. Is it his acceptable will where God says, okay, this is acceptable. I'll accept this. I'll, I'll bless it. I'll put the blessing of God over this. Or is it the perfect will of God? Is it the, is it the perfect will of God where now you're able to see very specific things, unique things, begin to take place in your life. It's a beautiful thing when you begin to see it. So I want, I encourage you to sit with that. As I said, this is a controversial topic and I won't tolerate any division in the comments, but what I will say is I encourage you to just take it to the Lord, sit with it and study the scriptures that I gave you, study the accounts that I gave you. And I'm going to tell you that, um, Sarah, Abraham, and Isaac, Hannah, Penina, and Elkina, David, Jesse, and his brothers, and David coming from the second marriage, are not the only accounts within scripture where we see God saying, not that one, but this one. Not that one, but this one. And there's a reason for that. And I want you to allow the Spirit of God to minister to you what that reason is. Of course, we broke it down to you today, but I believe there's more revelation for the Lord to give you concerning this matter. We see it happen many different times throughout scripture. We see the same thing happen with Joseph, Mary, and Jesus. Could it have been any other woman? Absolutely not. It had to be Mary for very specific reasons. Number one, she was a virgin. And there were other things within the character of Mary, even coming down to the, the, the lineage and the bloodline of Joseph and Mary, where it had to be those two. So I'll, I'll invite you into prayer with me now. And then I have some things I want to share with you. And then I'll release you into your day. I thank you, Lord, for sending your children to this message, the right people, God, the right people who need to hear it. I thank you, Lord, for giving them understanding on today. I thank you, Lord, for pouring out your spirit. There are, there are, there are new people here, God. New people here. Well, now their eyes are open, God. They were listening to advice and things being shared by people in the world who don't serve you, God. But now they get truth from the word of God. I thank you, Lord, for this truth today. Even those who have been attached to this ministry for some time, they're hearing it differently. Their ears have been opened. They see it differently. I thank you, Lord. I decree and declare over every marriage that is attached to this ministry that the blessing of God falls upon you now. You're coming into right alignment with God now. You're coming into step with the Lord now. There are blessings the Lord has set for your life. Send an angel of the Lord, God, to bless their marriage, to bless their covenant, God. Bring peace into their marriage. Bring, bring the peace of God that surpasses all understanding into their hearts and their mind, Lord, according to Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Let there be no anxiety. Let there be no fear. I drive it out now in the name of Jesus. As a third strand cord is not easily broken. I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you cover them with favor. I thank you, Lord, that they each have angels that have been assigned to them that are standing guard. 
give the word that they are forever protected and there's a hedge of protection that begins to form around them. Even for marriages that have not yet formed, but you have destined them to form. For those who are attached to this ministry, teach them, Lord, how to wait on you. Teach them, Lord, how to be obedient and stay within the will of God. I thank you, Lord, for all the marriages that are coming forth from this ministry. I thank you, God, for the blessing of the Lord on the marriages that have already formed who are under this ministry. And I see it increasing in the name of Jesus. You are so good, God. Let every spirit of division sent to divide and separate any married couple connected to this ministry be sent to the abyss in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. You're so good, God. Bring about understanding, deeper revelation concerning what was shared today. In the name of Jesus, amen. I'm so glad for what God is doing in your life. I'm so glad for what God is doing in your marriage. For those of you who are married, I'm so glad for what God is doing um, and those of you who are single and you are believing in God for a kingdom marriage, you know this is what God has for you. I, I thank God for your marriage already. Do you know that the word is already spoken? You just don't see the person in your life now. The word was already given. And you, you must give God glory for that. You must give him glory for that. Okay, so I want to share something with you all. Um, so for those of you who are unaware, you can still enroll in the marriage prep course. Course. I do have to make that known. Any course where it's being taught live currently or it is no longer being taught live, you can still enroll in that course. Absolutely. Um, I'll put for the marriage prep course, the link isn't, it's still a private link, but what I'll do is I'll put it in the description of this message. So you can enroll just by clicking on that link. If you have any questions, feel free to email us. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. And that goes for any course that goes for the Exodus course, any course we teach live. If it's no longer being taught live, you can still enroll. And even as we're teaching live, you can still enroll in the course. What that just means is you'll get in as we are go moving along. And so you'll catch, you can, you have the ability to catch the next live uh, lessons and I'll put the day and time. So you, you know, what time we'll be live and teaching within the course, but then you also get access to the replay and it's lifetime access lifetime access, which is, um, it's a plus. I, I definitely want to make sure that you know that whenever you want to go back and listen to the lesson, take notes, rewatch it, um, allow the spirit of God to bring you more revelation and minister to you more that it'll be available for you. I'll put that link in the description. If you want prayer concerning anything we talked about today or, um, on anything else, send us a prayer request. That link is in the description. We'll also put it on the screen in a moment when we close out, but it's a contact link. It'll take you to our uh, website where you can send in a prayer request. You can send in a testimony. You can send in an inquiry. We want to hear from you. We want to pray for you. We also want to celebrate with you. And that option is below. I'm telling you too many times to count too many times to count. We get prayer requests where only if it's happening more rapidly now, or only a few days later, a few weeks later, we get in an email where now that prayer request is turned into a testimony where all glory to God, it's, a, it's on repeat. The similar sayings, you prayed and then this happened. You all prayed and then this happened. Well, all glory to God. That's because when we pray for you, we expect God to move. And it's only a matter of time before you see that which you righteously prayed for manifest in your life by the righteous right hand of God. And so I'm telling you that when you send in your prayer request, just begin to expect God to move. Expect God to move. Take God at his word. So that option is available for you. For those of you who the Lord has put it on your hearts, put seed in the seed in the ground. This is an incredibly fertile atmosphere to do so. And I say that giving all glory to God. There are many things that the spirit of God wants to do through you and to you, to you and through you. And some of those things he'll speak to you. He'll give you an instruction. He'll say, sow a seed, sow a seed here. So this amount tie it to this scripture and you must obey. And I'm going to tell you that if you never obey, would you ever have known what could have come of that? You would not, you would not have known what could have come of that. And I'm telling you how there are many times where the Lord will speak to me about sowing a seed. And sometimes I'll be real with you. Sometimes I question it. I'm like, did I, did I hear you right? Lord, did I really hear you? And then sometimes I don't do this now, but I would sit on it for a day or, or a day or two. And I believe the Lord was teaching me something in that because then he'd bring it back to me. 
a day later, sometimes a few days later, and it'll be, it'll keep coming back to me. I told you to sow that seed. I told you to sow that seed and it must be this amount. And there's a reason for that. And I, I, I usually don't know what the reason is in that moment until the harvest comes. And I know that's what that seed was for. That is what that seed was for. And I'm telling you, it's pressed down, shaken together, running over. God will even cause men to come give into your bosom. What, what does that mean? It means he'll cause people to come out of the woodworks and just say, I just want to bless you with this. I just want to give you this. The Lord told me to give you this exactly because you were obedient. Do you see how that works? Because you obeyed and sowed that seed. Now they obeyed and did what God told them to do. It's a beautiful thing when you begin to see it. And then there are some times where you know what you're sowing for. God puts it in your spirit. He says, listen, I'm calling you to put a seed in the ground for that. I've sown for family members. I've sown multiple times for family members. I've sown for very specific things. And I've sown just because the Lord said, sow that seed. And you'll never know. It could be, I'll just say that. I'll say that. I'll leave you with that. I encourage you to be obedient and just do what God tells you to do. And there will be an incredible harvest that comes forth. And when you see it with your eyes and you know it's because of that seed, you, you would never be the same. You would never doubt God's word. And your entire life will change because once you see the principles of God working in your life, it changes everything for you. And so we'll put that information on the screen on how you can sow a seed um, after we close out. And then it'll be in the description as well. All right. So on, on that note, um, I love you all. Know that I'm always praying for you and I will talk with you in the next message.